So today, ladies, we're going to talk about what to wear and not to wear on your next photo shoot so you can capture the best headshot. Um, so really, it's about the do's and don'ts of camera-ready style. We're talking about your photo for LinkedIn, your website, your social media, your Instagram, so that you can represent the best you online. One of my favorite quotes from Coco Chanel, in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. So going into your photo shoot, think what can differentiate your look um, online to really get yourself noticed. And it starts with defining your signature style. So um, be very aware of what your role is, your goal, and what industry you're working in. If you work in banking, if you work in finance, if you work in a very formal corporate setting, you have to be very in tune with what the message, your style in your photo shoot is sending when people look at your profile picture on LinkedIn. For example, you don't want to put up, you know, a selfie of you in your party dress with your puppy if your goal is to, um, you know, get a full-time job as a CPA or a financial advisor. Um, so be very aware of your role, your goal, and the industry you're working in. Now, on the other side of that industry, you could be in a more creative industry, marketing, fashion, PR. That way you can show a little bit more um, color or a little bit more print or personality. So before you go into your photo shoot, before you get ready with what to wear, clearly define what is your role, what is your goal, and what is your industry. We always start there. Because um, again, you have to think about the message that your image is conveying on LinkedIn. And with the attention spans getting shorter and shorter online, people will literally pause and click and engage more in your LinkedIn profile or your website if they feel there's a picture of you that's engaging and welcoming, confident, professional, and polished. A um, uh, couple things to consider when you're uh, thinking about your style for your close up is you know, what's your personality? What do you want to bring to the table that maybe differentiates you? Again, if you're in the corporate sector, finance, um, uh, in finance, in law, there's that trustworthy, you want to look confident, approachable. Um, if you're in PR and marketing, you want to look creative, you want to think outside the box. And key to end it with is beyond the first impression, what will make you memorable? So I just love these two examples because Cynthia Nixon had a really strong brand during her campaign. She had her role, she had her goal, her industry is politics. Um, she well-defined her personality and what would make her memorable as a candidate. And then you have women um, making Forbes 30 under 30. And look at how polished and present she looks and just, um, I don't know, just confident. She looks like a successful entrepreneur. So start at the beginning, um, ladies, when you're, even before you go into your photo shoot, really go into it with setting an intention so that you get the best look out of it. Um, for inspiration, you can also think of your sheroes. Um, again, if you're creative, like a Frida Kahlo, if you're adventurous, if you're um, uh, one of the first women who's going to be in science or math or physics and thinking of firsts that are happening in engineering or research or tech. I'm loving all the women that are entering tech world right now. Think of that signature that's going to set you apart in your photo. And I'm just going to breeze through some samples. Um, you could be a little bit more un understated, a little hint of man-tailored, like an Ellen DeGeneres. Um, your vibe could be spiritual, colorful, open. Um, maybe your profession is you're a yoga instructor or you're in the spiritual space, like an Oprah Winfrey, self-improvement. Um, and really think about color. I mean, look at how this color really stands out, even as you're looking at this computer screen. And I do want to encourage you um, to pull out a notepad, take some notes along the way. And when we get to the end, like Maggie said, we'll answer some questions. But if there's anything you see here, take a screenshot. Everything's going to be on Pinterest so that you just take some notes as we go and we'll do a recap at the end. But color is really key. Look at how this color pops on your computer screen. This is whereas, you know, Ellen, okay, great. She's in her black, her white, and her gray. But the color that you notice is the chair she's sitting in. So be aware of the use of color. You want to use colors that are going to pop on camera and also flatter your skin tones. 
um, utilizing color with a scarf. Now, if you are going to wear black on camera, pop it somewhere else with color, whether it's the blouse you wear underneath or the scarf. Um, prints, you could explore prints on camera. Prints are a little tricky. We're going to go into those more in depth. But let's say your vibe is a little bit, you're in corporate, but you want to bring that softer feminine side to um, the corporate world. You can consider print and pearls. Look at how beautiful red looks um, on camera. Think of these vibrant colors. Like I always joke, think of, look at, look at TV shows. Look at what the TV anchors are wearing. Look at the view. Look at, um, what's the other one that I like watching? The Reel. How many of you like watching The Reel? Um, look at what these gals wear on TV because there is a science behind color on film, photography, and television. Now, it used to be that they wouldn't suggest black or white for television, but now they've been able to like tweak the cameras to adjust. But look at how this red pops. So imagine someone looking on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's website is kind of made up of blues and grays. Wearing red will totally make you um, pop out on camera. And don't be afraid to pull in something from your culture or your history, um, your background, your heritage. Um, you know, Malala, she's all about education for women. Um, in Pakistan and with education for girls who aren't getting it. So she's representing um, a part of her. So make sure that it's in tune with your industry. I'm not saying if you're in banking and you're Indian, show up on your photo shoot with, you know, a sari, but it's maybe it's in the jewelry. You can do a little hint of your heritage, but also make sure that you're going to blend in to the industry you're working in but find that little something that's gonna make you stand out and be remembered. Are there some uh, of you listening in today that are being involved in uh, politics or campaigning? Look at how beautiful this deep, rich cobalt blue. Her hair is neat. You can see her face. She's got a great expression. The jewelry is simple. It's not distracting. And her nails are done. <laughs> so this is a great photo to use an example um, for pose, expression, hair, color. Everything's put together. So you want to think of those elements. And we're going to explore each of those elements more in depth as we go along. If you're an actress, if you're a comedian, and you need photos for your Instagram, your Facebook, your social media, don't be afraid to really express your creative side. Let the curly hair go natural. Wear bold prints. Wear some colors. I don't know if any of you out there are two dope queen fans. I love listening to their podcasts. And they have like an HBO special now. But they come from this really cool urban vibe. Um, they're 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 funny. They're this combination of like really slick, smart urban vibe, but they're also kind of nerdy and into sci-fi, and just um, very open and supportive of um, diversity. So again, that's identifying the role, the goal, your industry to blend in yet stand out. Um, Iris Apfel. She's a legacy in her own time. She gobs it on because she's a style icon. So if you're a fashionista, don't be afraid to show that in your profile picture. If you need visual references, um, if you have nowhere to start, if you have no idea where to start, you're like, I don't even know what my style is. What does that mean, Tanya? <laughs> um, I suggest exploring who your sheroes are. Look for other women in your industry. Look for, research them. Research Forbes under 30. Go to LinkedIn. Look what other women are wearing. Um, and create your own Pinterest board. If you need inspiration, you can follow mine, Stirl on Style, and I have plenty of ideas for um, you know, corporate wear, jackets, suits, dresses, blouses, et cetera. This way you can collect some visual reference before you either shop your own closet or go shopping for your outfit that you're going to wear on your photo shoot. So we'll just go through some fashion formulas here. Um, so for the camera, you want to be very aware of fit and consider the headshot that you're really going to be more like from the waist up. So these are full body shots. The girl on the left, she's got the bright yellow skirt, which is great, but she's wearing that on the bottom. That might not necessarily show up in your photography. So what you are going to see from the waist up is the textured lace and the navy blazer. What's pretty about that is even though she has the basic navy blazer, she's putting a little something feminine and different with it for on camera, a little bit of lace. 
um, a little hint of texture. Now be careful with lace. Lace can be perceived as too sexy if you go into black or sheer. This has a beautiful neckline. It's got coverage. The jacket is tailored and fits her well. Now the gal on the right, she's got a pink jacket. So pink, a pink blazer would pop beautifully online. So even though she kept it with a basic um, black shell underneath, again, think of utilizing color and texture to make your um, photo stand out. Dresses are a great way, if you don't wanna do the tailored blazer approach, dresses are a great way to show up on set on photo shoot because they're tailored beautifully, they're gonna fit you, and what I suggest is a dress with a sleeve. Going into your photo shoot, the end results, you wanna think of what is attractive and not distractive. If your neckline is too low, that's gonna be distracting. If your arms are bare and your arm is pressed against your body, like it's gonna look too large because that's what's facing the camera, that's gonna be distracting. So you wanna think of sensible necklines. Look at these V-necks, none of them are too low. So really keep in mind necklines. Um, and these are also beautiful pictures, uh, colors for camera. The emerald green, the cobalt blue, and they also have a sleeve. So again, if you're gonna go into it without a jacket, wear a dress um, that has a sleeve because it just allows for a little bit more coverage. Now, if you're a yoga instructor or a fitness instructor and it's all about like showing off your well-toned, you know, healthy arms, by all means, uh, go sleeveless. But for the most part, default to wearing a sleeve. Now, the woman on the right, she's in a beige. Notice how, maybe if you met this woman in person, it would look beautiful, but it's a little bit similar to her skin tone and washing her out. So I would say don't go with neutrals or beiges or colors that are too similar to your own skin tone. It's gonna wash you out. So just see the contrast between how the green and the blue pop on camera, pop against the skin, versus like a muted neutral, something to keep in mind for color. Again, dresses with great necklines, look for dresses that um, aren't too low. I love the color block idea, that little bit of white, black, and blue. She might need to just pop a little bit of a jacket or a shrug on top. The print on the right, um, the black and white, that could look maybe a little bit too big and bold for camera, because again, think of it as the waist up. So just be very careful of your choices in terms of color, sleeve length, neckline, and print. Suits, you can get creative with suits. Find ones in color, find ones with different necklines. It doesn't always have to be that typical notch collar suit. And again, if you look at these women, it's almost like hold your hand up to the, the screen there. Look at these women from the waist up and look at how beautifully these open necklines frame their face for on camera. Think of the detail that's gonna show up from the waist up when you're captured in your photo shoot and in your headshot. And I do recommend a little bit more of an open neckline. You want to avoid turtlenecks. You want to avoid anything that's going to feel um, too constricting, too covered up. It just elongates the neck. It, um, it allows for just a little bit of an openness. So really pay attention to necklines. Now, some of these looks like, okay, the t-shirt with the necklace, the navy blazer on the left, that's going to be a little bit difficult to help uh, keep looking neat on camera. So again, keep that for a more creative professional. Um, if you're in publishing or you're a writer, um, a little bit of attitude and a little bit of movement is okay if it's for your website or your Instagram or your Facebook. That's where you can get a little bit more creative with the body, the movement, but if it's for your LinkedIn, you know how tiny that little LinkedIn picture looks on your phone or on your computer. So wear items that you're gonna be able to keep kind of like neat, pressed, ironed, and looking neat. Um, the woman on the right, great, beautiful ruffle, um, that's gonna have trouble translating on camera because the eye doesn't know where to land, right? You're gonna be like looking up and down the ruffle. But again, if you're gonna be doing your own, if you're a style influencer, if you're more creative, you can get away with something like that. So again, find that thing that's gonna make you stand out, but make sure it's in tune with your industry so you're not distracting a potential employer or um, an ideal client. So you can get a little bit more creative with your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook, um, but for LinkedIn, better to keep it a little bit more composed and professional. 
just going to breeze through to some of the more relevant slides here. Um, and again, think about that thing that makes you different, that's going to make you memorable. Um, all these women, great expressions, great hair, um, you know, great poses, but they're missing a little bit of jewelry and they're all in these neutral colors. So don't be afraid to accessorize and add a little color to your shoot. Um, I'm going to do uh, show you a couple of my clients that I styled for their photo shoots. So these happen to be two clients of mine. You wouldn't know that they are both in the same industry. They are both food photographers. But because they have such a different approach to their photography, I styled them differently for their photo shoots. So Evie, um, Evie is German. You can see some of her work at the top. She loves symmetry. She loves minimalism. She loves when things are really like um, understated, simple. So for her photo shoot, and she's used to being like behind the scenes, she was like, you know what? I want to go simple, roll my sleeves up because I love digging in. <laughs> we kept her beautiful red hair. Um, and then we ended up styling a couple more photos with some fun colors like the olive green and that pop of red under her blazer because it represented her work and her brand as a food photographer. So you can see this whole beautiful color palette we created for her that did not include black. So that's what differentiates her. Whereas Mirazaki, food photographer, oh my gosh, she loves the color purple. She loves photographing uh, food from Egypt because it taps into her heritage. So um, I happened to style her for one of her events in black, but for her photo shoot, you can see her photographing and there's someone filming behind her. She's a photographer. She's not in front of the camera. She's behind the camera. So she was terrified <laughs> of getting her headshot done and getting her film and her photo shoot. But we went with what she loved. She loved the color purple. So we found a purple blouse for her. Um, so really find your comfort level. Know what your favorite colors are. And if you're that type that's terrified to be on camera, that color will give you that confidence. And also, she knew she couldn't do it alone. And she hired me as her personal stylist to get, to get her ready. So if you have a trusted friend um, who works in fashion or is a personal stylist, I do recommend not going into it alone. Of course, you know, that's what I do. So we can talk about that at the end of the slide. Um, but she was, there was something to be said about knowing yourself, how prepared can you be and confident can you be choosing the outfit on your own without a professional? Um, so she stepped up and she said, I need Tanya to style me. Um, Regan, oh my gosh, Regan in the middle, I styled her for her um, acting headshots. So we kept the hair natural, bold. She wants comedy roles um, and we kept her in that beautiful red. Um, so again, if you grew out your hair to be white gray and you're not dying it anymore, showcase that. If you're, you know, if you love rocking a hajib, don't recommend the sunglasses for your headshot, but if that's part of your brand and who you are and that's going to blend into your industry and also attract your ideal clients and um, your ideal jobs, don't be afraid to bring that thing, that, that thing that's going to make you memorable. It could be your hair. It could be your accessory. It could be you're known as the woman with, you know, the bright red lip because you're a makeup artist. So find the thing that makes you memorable, but again, make sure that it's in tune with the industry that you're in. Oh my gosh, love Madeline, Madeline Albright and her pins. That's what makes her memorable. There's a whole book about her and her pins. Uh, jewelry. So now we're going to talk about jewelry. Um, jewelry on camera. There's such thing as going too big and bold where it's gonna take you over and look um, too much on camera. You don't, again, it's all about the look attractive, but not distractive. Um, and on the converse, if you choose jewelry that's like too tiny and not noticeable, you might not see it at all. So really think through the jewelry. If you're gonna choose a necklace that's a little more bold, make sure that it doesn't take you over so much that like, you know, your head is looking too small or your body is looking too small on camera. Camera is a whole other visual illusion than when you see people in person. Um, so be very aware of the size and scale. Go for more of a mid-size necklace that you can see. And you can always do like test this out. Try on a few different necklaces, 
take some selfies, look at yourself in the mirror, show them to some friends and go, okay, do you notice me or do you notice the necklace? Because <laughs> you want people to notice you on camera. But don't be afraid to pull in, again, jewelry or accessories that are part of your heritage. Again, if you're in a more creative industry, go for it for your Facebook, Instagram, um, all your social media. LinkedIn, you want to scale it back just a little bit and be um, more professional and choose something a little bit more refined. If you're going to go with a necklace with a little more detail, you can totally keep the earring simple and you don't have to overthink it. Don't be like, oh my gosh, no one's going to see my pearl earrings in my LinkedIn photo. Don't sweat this. Don't overthink it. But do choose a necklace that you can see on camera and then keep the earring simple. What you don't want to do is have really big earrings and a big necklace and, and, and. It's just going to look too much on camera and too, be dis too distracting. When it comes to jewelry, less is more. Choose one area that's going to be the accent. Either of these necklaces would work beautifully with a statement dress uh, with a V-neck. So again, the necklace is a little more sta statement, so keep the earrings simple. The watch depends on the pose. Are people going to see it or not? Are you going to cross your arms? Are you going to have your hand near your face? Um, but a beautiful watch, if you're in uh, corporate, if you're in tech, you know, cool eye watch, that could help convey part of your brand in your headshot. Let's talk glasses, ladies. Oh my gosh, when I get my clients ready for their headshots, I always have to ask them, do you wear your glasses all day, every day at work? Like, is that part of your look? Um, I had one client that, it was kind of funny, she forgot to refer to me <laughs> before she got her headshot. I think she was just like um, nervous that morning. She got out the door and she did the headshot without wearing her glasses. And I said, but wait, you wear your glasses every day. When we styled your outfit, we talked about the glasses. So just again, before that photo shoot, you want to be prepared and think through all the detail. Your jewelry, your glasses, and your outfit. So, and a statement glasses, what a great way to make a statement in your profile picture. It can be expressive, they can be simple, they can be bold, they can be classic. But if you're in and around the office or if you do your um, YouTube videos or if you have a blog and like glasses are, you th are your thing, don't go into the photo shoot without glasses. There's gonna be that disconnect when people see you online without glasses and then they meet you in person. They're gonna be like, oh, are you the same person? Oh, the glasses. <laughs> So definitely, if that's one of your signatures and you wear it often, be consistent with what your online image is and how you look in person. So be that woman known for the statement glasses. Here's ways to show how color can really pop. So um, your headshot, okay, we're talking about LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. If you have a blog, if you're a published author, like my friend Robin Hatcher, Going into your photo shoot, know that these photos can be used across all your platforms. Um, if you're a published author, bam, your headshot can be used for your books. It can be used for um, if you have an event coming up. Like I know, you know, this webinar today for Savvy Ladies, I needed to provide my headshot for it that was used um, on all their marketing materials. So know that going into and investing in your headshot and your photo shoot is going to get you a long way because you can use it for all your marketing materials, for events, postcards, services you're offering, products you're offering. And what I love about Robin is she's all about um, speaking to your maximum potential, right? She's all about communication, bold. So if that's part of your vibe, consider prints and patterns. Now again, each of these from the waist up. Gotta love Mindy Kaling. What I love is her characters on TV does emulate of how she is in real life. Um, but again, a more creative industry. Look at how pretty that yellow pops on camera. Look at how pretty the turquoises look. Look at how pretty the floral is. So if you're in a more creative industry, don't be afraid to explore color. Who doesn't love Tracy Ellis Ross? She really goes for it with color. Now, I touched on that a little bit. So we want to talk about that consistency of URL online and IRL. Um, in real life. So again, you want that consistency to build 
trust. You don't want that disconnect when someone sees you on LinkedIn and then they go to meet you in person and it doesn't match up. So we talked about all these platforms that you want to be able to use this headshot for from your website, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and your YouTube channel. Now, I'm going to scold those of you listening in that don't have a LinkedIn picture. This is the worst thing you can do that's going to not create uh, trust. So if potential employers want to look at your profile and you don't have a photo, you may be passed over for potential job interviews. Um, if you are trying to connect with, like let's say you offer a product or a service and you're trying to connect with ideal clients, if they can't see who you are, they're gonna wonder if you're even a real person <laughs> or if this is a false profile. So trust, you do need a LinkedIn photo. <laughs> Don't go into it without. And also make sure, now this is this woman's headshot and I saw her speaking live at a leadership summit, leadership summit. So look at, this is her professional profile shot. It's a wide angle lens, it's skewing her face. It must be some selfie she held over her head. It's in black and white. So trust that you do need a photo. You want reality and virtual to be consistent and please no selfies. I actually learned from my photographer friend that the phone, the camera that's in an iPhone has a little bit more of a wide angle tilt to it. So if you ever notice that you take a picture and it doesn't quite look like you, that's because the camera that's in it is a wide angle. So trust that you need a photo. Do not use a selfie for your LinkedIn photo. Get a professional photographer and get it done professionally. So here's some examples um, of keeping your headshot up to date as your look evolves. So this is one of my, my clients, um, Allison. She's a financial advisor. She changed her hair. So this was about three years later. Keep your headshot updated every three to five years as your look changes. Now, I do have some clients with like fabulous, you know, some clients that are African American and from the in, um, the islands and they have beautiful, you know, hair that they change from wearing it out curly to braiding it, um, to straightening it. So yes, you can get creative with the hairstyles, but just be aware to choose that one for the picture that maybe is the, the go-to look that you default to. Um, in Allison's case, you know, she grew out her hair, it was curly, she loves the color pink, so we updated her profile picture so that when people met her in person, she looked like her photo online. Another one of my clients, Rena, now she went from working within a law firm. So she went in just, you know, white background, very basic and clean, Sorry, it's a little pixelated. I grabbed this from online. Um, that's why else you wanna make sure to get it done professionally because you wanna avoid this um, pixelation. Your photo should look really clear. So she went into it with the black jacket and the white shirt because that's what her um, corporate law firm required, very formal. Well, she went into business for herself. If any of you listening in are in the health and wellness industry and you need a, a business uh, lawyer to take care of your business, this is Rena Grassati. She wanted to appeal to the health and wellness audience, people in fitness, um, nutritionists. So we went with green for her headshot. Green is the color of um, health and wellness. And we chose a more rich background. So it, it felt less cold and more warm and engaging and inviting. Again, her headshot was a snapshot and she cropped her friend out of the picture. She's got sunglasses on her head, like then and now, then is what not to do. Now her eye contact into the camera, a beautiful relaxed smile, color that makes her pop. Um, my client, uh, Alyssa Levitt, she's a, a writing coach. That was then, this is now. Now this is only three to five years later, but she was turning 30. So then she was 27. She had that younger, more carefree vibe. She wanted to be seen more of like the CEO type and the founder of her writing, coaching and publishing company. So the blazer, the hair, it just looks a little bit more polished. So look at the difference between the then and now. You wanna represent who you are now and where you're going next. So there's nothing wrong with the other picture, but she just wanted to grow into that 30 year old woman that she felt like she was now. And we captured that in the photo. I chose the blush pink jacket for her, the pretty ruffle, 
It's got that soft and feminine edge. I mean, when you want to share your story with her and help her uh, for her to write your book, she looks open, inviting, soft, feminine, pretty. That's her vibe. And then she ended up using um, her photos for all of her branding and marketing as well. We even did it on the steps of um, Carrie Bradshaw's character from Sex in the City, because that was one of her favorite inspirations. Again, just see the difference between a then and now. Uh, this is Jessica Peria. She founds a boutique uh, design firm that does websites, brands, and logos for women-owned businesses. So she said, make me look like a CEO, but with a creative touch. So that was then. This is now. And I ended up photographing her whole team. So see the difference of how the one on the right, they look cohesive, they work together, um, and that color really pops. And she was able to use it for all of her website. Again, think of color, don't always default to black. And Trina's been able to use all her photos for her headshots. Jenny Powers, running with heels. We had fun with her uh, photo shoot. We did pops of red. She wanted a Sex in the City vibe, so we went for it. Bam. This is one of my corporate clients, but she also works with um, women who are um, uh, getting over addiction and um, creating new lives for themselves. So she uses one headshot for her executive coaching and the other one um, for the women. So she just has a more soft feminine approach to it. And again, she uses it for all her marketing. She's dressed and ready for her YouTube videos, her online, her camera. Smith Banfield, she just recently cut her hair. So she had to update her photo as well. Fitness experts, uh, Sonia Satra of Moda Size. She loves orange and activating color. So we use that for her photo shoots. Ah, the sky's the limit. <laughs> Just positivity, you know, engaging. We put her in red for camera. So again, think of those colors. Like I love to look at television for, for your uh, people. Think of color, think of fit. You don't want anything too boxy and loose to make you appear bigger on camera, but you don't want anything too tight or constricting that you're not gonna be able to breathe and relax in on camera. Um, so again, to recap, go for brights like red, pink, orange, yellow, greens, blues, and purples. As much as possible, avoid black, all black, all white, brown, navy, neutral, unless you have another color to pop it. Now, this gray she gets away with because it's a medium gray and she's got the jewelry. You want to look at creating Vs and open necklines. Now, she can totally get away with wearing white on camera because she popped it with that beautiful uh, black bold lip and contrasted it with the black. And she kept the jewelry in certain areas. Um, unless you are a jewelry designer, then, you know, bring it on. Great face, great v-necks, a little hint of scarf for print. So really be prepared for your photo shoot. I work with Alyssa Peak, Peak Photography. She photographs most of my clients. You don't want to be pulling clothes out of your closet the night before panicking for your photo shoot. Book your photo shoot at least 30 days in advance. Get your outfit ready at least two weeks in advance. If you can't pull it from your closet and you have to go shopping, you might need to get something tailored. So be prepared. Your clothing should be steamed, pressed, and ready hanging in a garment bag. I mean, Alyssa told me she had one girl that wadded up her clothes in a backpack. When she pulled them out for her photo shoot, they were all wrinkled. No, you can uh, bring a little handheld My Little Steamer with you and steam them there on the photo shoot if you have to. If you can't go into this alone, I highly recommend hiring a professional. Um, photographers like Alyssa Peak, Peak Photography, she's my go-to photographer here in New York City if you're in the area, I highly recommend her. And of course, I'm here and available. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do is to style my clients for their photo shoots to get their outfits ready. And most importantly, when you get on set, remember to relax, breathe, have fun with it, and smile. <laughs> so remember that investment in your image online is ultimately an investment in your success. You can increase your visibility, which increases your sales, which increases your opportunities, your client base, and that chance for that dream job or dream client. 
I hired a professional for my photo shoot and now I use all my photos across all of my um, social media. And I've used, I did all these photos last year and I'm still using these photos to this date. I'll be able to use these photos for at least a couple more years. So remember, investing in that photo shoot date, those photos should last you for at least the next three to five years, again, unless you do a real change of look. If you're a woman in politics, you also have to be camera ready. That was then, this is now. Be ready for that photo shoot because you can have anything if you want, ladies, when you dress for it. So we're gonna open it up to questions in a moment. I did wanna gift each of you listening in with a 30 minute consultation. So if you have um, further questions that we can't answer today, about um, your role, your goal, how to get ready for your photo shoot, email me, tanya at sterlonstyle.com. And as a thank you for listening in today, if you um, subscribe to my newsletter or sign up for a consultation, I'm gonna send you my camera ready style tip sheet. So you can have all these do's and don'ts on a tip sheet so that you're ready to go. And Maggie, I think we'll open it up to questions. Great, Great. Thank, thank you, Tanya. You, Tanya. Um, I'll remind everyone, if you have a question, you can use the chat box or email info at SavvyLadies.org. And a question that we had come in during the presentation is, um, I'm a recent grad working in corporate right now, but I hope to start my own business. What do you suggest for my headshots? Is it something where I should have two different versions of them? Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've styled a few clients that have gone from leaving corporate world and that very formal suit to, my gosh, I had one, she was, um, she worked in finance and then she became like, she, she has these aloe vera health products that she um, travels the world with now. So keep your eye on the goal. You do, you do want to keep your look online on LinkedIn, cohesive with your present role, but you might want to get just a little creative with either the color or perhaps you want to do the dress and not the suit. So there's a little hint in that photo of what you're going for next. So that's why it's really being clear about like the goal, who are you trying to attract, what kind of potential um, ideal clients. So that the LinkedIn has to represent kind of who you are now, but I say move into the space in the industry that you're trying to attract next. But don't, you can't have like, go from like a Navy banking suit on LinkedIn to like, you know, a pink and red print floral dress online. That's too extreme of a, of a change. So for you, you might want to find that interim uh, balance between the both. If you're leaving corporate world and you're going to be going into business for yourself, there's a way to do business casual. So either a really cool blazer in a fun pop color with a cool necklace and a simple top or like a dress in color with a fun necklace. You can get a little bit more creative because you want to be dressing for the job that you want next or you want to be dressing for that business that you're going to be launching next. Okay, great. Um... Another question is asking if you have a ballpark number for what it would cost for headshots. So asking about um, photographer, hair and makeup artists, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, here, I, I, here in New York City, um, like I said, Alyssa Peak is my main go-to photographer. There's a range of um, photographers uh, here in New York City and Manhattan. So if I know if you show up with your hair and makeup already done, already ready, um, let's say you go to the salon or you have a friend who's a makeup artist, if you show up hair and makeup ready, then you just have to pay the photographer. Um, I'll just do an example. So Alyssa Peak does a two hour photo shoot. It includes hair and makeup on set. And the beauty of including the hair and makeup on set is, can you imagine if you got your hair and makeup done somewhere else and then on the way it's raining or the wind blows or you sweat <laughs> or you eat your lipstick off on the cab or the subway ride there. So I highly recommend um, having your ha hair and makeup artist there on set with you on the shoot date. You'll be more relaxed. 
you'll be more ready. You're not going to sweat. The makeup artist is there. If you sweat a little, she can put a little powder on you. So, you know, for the touch-ups. So Alyssa Peak does um, a two-hour photo shoot. She includes the hair and makeup artist. She photographs by natural light. Photographing by natural light is um, one of the best ways to get the best complexion, the best glow um, from your shoot. And she allows you to bring three outfits. So with three outfit changes. So um, the other thing that I like about Alyssa Peak, and I will get to the pricing, but I just want to convey the questions that you should ask so that it conveys the value of this headshot. Now, there's some people in Manhattan that might do headshots for around 250 to 350. You show up with one outfit, you're there for an hour, and you're in and out. But not every photographer knows how to pose women on camera to get their best angles. So what Alyssa Peak does, she comes from a fashion background. She knows how to pose you on camera to get the best angle so that your face is at an angle, your shoulder is at an angle, so that the widest part of your body isn't facing the camera, so that she really coaches you through. So she does three outfits, includes the hair and makeup, includes the studio, and she gets you three retouched images after the shoot is done. Every woman needs a little bit of re touching in their photo after the shoot if there's just like a pimple or a funny vein this is not to like gloss you over and make you look you know not how you are so she does um this photo shoot package for 950. so that includes the coaching the photo shoot day the three outfit changes and the post-production but i know here in manhattan photos can range uh anywhere from like 250 if you're in and out in an hour show up with one outfit and you show up with your hair and makeup ready. Um, but you have to ask yourself, how confident are you going into a shoot without having this other support? Um, and I also offer uh, personal styling before the photo shoot, depending on how many outfits you need. I charge anywhere from 250 to 550, um, whether it's one outfit, three outfits, and whether we're shopping your closet or I'm taking you shopping for a new outfit. Maybe what you need isn't even in your closet. Um, so I would say that's like a good range um, here in New York City. I'm not sure about other towns or cities, but go online, look at Yelp reviews, look at the photographer's website, look at other people that they photograph. Do you like the way the other people look in, photo in their photographs? You know, is their head too small? Is their body too big? Is it a weird angle? Like really look at these things and don't be afraid to interview multiple photographers. Um, so that you're comfortable with the photographer on the day of the suit, to, uh, the day of the shoot too. This is a really intimate experience. I mean, it's you on camera. So really find a photographer that you're going to be um, comfortable with. So I hope that helps answer the question. And that's why, in the five years I've been doing styling, I've interviewed about five different photographers. There's three that I work with in New York City, and Alyssa Peak's my number one because she gives my clients um, the best results from what I've seen. So that's a good average price range and what to look for and what to plan on. Okay, great. Thank you for walking us through that and, and explaining that. Good tips there. And the last question for you um, is asking, I'm a plus size woman in a senior leadership position. I'm a fashionista, but feel that if I go too far with some of my fashion choices, it would be a distraction. Any solid go-to tips for plus size women? Oh, yes, absolutely. And I say if you're in a senior le level position, you've earned it. <laughs> you've earned it. Own it and show other women what's possible. Um, I've found that in corporate, the rules are changing. And one of my missions as a personal stylist is absolutely to change the look of women's leadership one woman at a time. Um, so I think for you, don't be afraid of color. Um, experiment with a little bit of print, have fun with the accessories, but again, keep the focus in just one to two areas. So let's say you do a solid jacket. You could do a print underneath the solid jacket and then have a little fun with the jewelry. So choose the one or two focal points that are going to complement one another. Um, you know, don't go for the big earrings and the big necklace and the big print and the big jewelry because it's going to be, you know, uh, a little bit too much. 
But I say, don't be afraid of showing your personality. If you're in that senior level position, you are setting the tone. You've done your dues. Like when you first got your first job, how many years ago, you had to go in wearing the black and the navy and, you know, blending in and not rocking the boat. Um, my gosh, it reminds me of uh, uh, one of my clients. Her signature is uh, her red dress and her leopard heel pumps. And she's in a senior level position at a financial firm and she just owns it. Um, what I will say for plus size is um, you want to avoid jackets that are too boxy and too drapey. You want to be able to either um, uh, give a little bit of waist definition and you're going to want to focus on not just the waist up, but almost like the chest up and really frame around your face. So if you do do a print blouse underneath, put a little bit of a solid jacket on it. And I would say jackets, avoid the shoulder pads that might add a little bit too much volume on camera. For you, your go-to would probably be a fabulous dress with a sleeve, a little bit of a round neck, a little bit of a V-neck and have fun with those earrings. Um, if you do go for a jacket or a blazer, do something non-traditional. Do something with like a little bit of a V-neck, put the print blouse underneath, do that pop of color and have fun with the jewelry. But I want to encourage you to just own it <laughs> and really express your style. You've earned it. Okay, great. Thanks, Tanya. Um, so those are the questions we have. So um, we will be sending out Tanya's information. Um, we'll send a follow-up email if you didn't have a chance to write anything down. And I would encourage you to check out Tanya's website and social media. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much, Tanya, for a great presentation, a lot of fun. Loved all the visuals in there. Thanks so much, Maggie. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.